Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. This is a comic of the month show. And I'm sitting here alone. It's very strange. I don't know how I'll be able to cope. For graphic of the month, I've uh, up my sleeve a small recording of me and Matt reviewing Sex Criminals Volume 1, which is will be shoehorned onto this show. And there's lots of sexual innuendos. But here we go. Comic of the month. I'm going to select one title that is my comic of the month, but I'm also going to give a little nod towards other titles that are very deserving of that mantle. And obviously, me being on my own here, usually we've got two people talking about our comic of the month and stuff, but to kind of balance it out and not all be one-sided on one thing and ignore the other, I'll choose three. Three titles that are an honourable mention, and then one comic of the month, which is, yeah, some a little bit something different from what we're usually doing for this show. So, honourable mentions. I want to give a big, big honourable mention to Star Trek The Next Generation Mirror Broken. And that is issue 3 by IDW Comics. And it's, if you're not familiar with Star Trek and the Mirror Universe, this is actually the first depiction, I believe, of the Next Generation series in the Mirror Universe. We've we've seen the original Kirk and Spock in DS9 had countless Mirror episodes, but this is the first time that we're actually seeing Picard, Riker, and the rest of the Next Generation crew in the Mirror Universe. It's very well done. It is, it is written by David Tipton, Scott Tipton, and the art is by J.K. Woodward. What can I say? This is absolutely incredible. It's a culmination of a f- of the last few issues. Basically, Jean-Luc Picard is in charge of the Stargazer Witch he originally was in the TV show, but he's heard rumours of the Empire, the Terran Empire, building a new ship, a massive warship, and he's been pulling all these strings to get what he wants, and what he wants is this starship, so that he can, he, he feels that the Terran Empire is run by idiots, and he wants to take charge and show them the way, the true way to rule. So this is a nice combination where actually Picard gets a ship, which is the Enterprise D. It's a galaxy class starship. So it's it's been a slow build to this. It's only a third issue, four if you include the comic that came out in Free Comic Book Day. It's a nice little inclusion, and it's something that I've always wanted to see. Jean Luc Picard and the Next Gen crew are. I feel we're disserviced by not getting a Mirror episode. I know there's countless other alternate realities and jumps in time and stuff, but the Mirror Universe is kind of like your main go-to for when you want to flip a, flip a good story and flip a good character. So this is finally justice for the next-gen crew, and I'm actually quite sad that you don't get to see the cast and crew perform as their mirror counterparts. But beggars can't be choosers. We got a lot of good stuff in the next gen series. And this is everything I've ever hoped it to be. And I hope it keeps on going that way. Uh, second not- noteworthy comic of the month. I'm going to have to go with Batman issue 29. Which is part 5 of the War of Jokes and Riddles. We know it's an 8 parter. And this is absolute chaos. So Bruce Wayne's breaking bread with the Riddler and the Joker. And he's sitting down with them, which is rather odd. And offering them a massive bounty of $1 billion that he's going to choose after they decide they present their case to kill Batman. That is why they're at war with each other. To both of them want to kill Batman, but they're at war with each other over this. So it's very strange and it presents a really good aspect that 
Batman's playing them off each other, and obviously Bruce Wayne being Batman, he knows what's going to happen. He's he knows who's who's going to be picked out of each one to kill, so to speak, Batman. And it, it's it's very strange. It's this I'd say this is the most action, even though there's not a lot of action that's happened in this uh, story arc so far. And I'm really interested to see where it goes. Tom King is absolutely killing it right now. And all I can say is that this is quite possibly my favourite Batman run of the last maybe six or seven years. Obviously you've got your uh, your Grant Morrison and stuff in, in that time scale, but this and and obviously Scott Snyder's which was absolutely incredible with the new fifty two. But Tom King writing, Mikael Janin, Inks, Hugo, Petrus on Inks, Pencils, Mikael Janin, and Colour by Jun Chung. This this is everything that you could hope it to be. Two, two groups of villains going to head in war with each other. And where it ends, there's, there is a... In the previous issue uh, in story arc of I Am Bane, you're hinted at by the Riddler that something happened so there's something major to come what it is we've got three issues to wrap up i'm excited for it and i like the riddler in this he's very cocky and very confident which is a little bit different from your kind of joking always hitting out with a riddle this one this riddler looks very cold and calculating you could almost say that the Joker and the Riddler have switched roles in this comic, but hell, what's what's not to love with a good super villain fight? Uh, also this month we had DC's Dark Knight's Metal Issue 1. Now, this is an absolute heavy, heavyweight title. You've got Scott Snyder on writing, uh, you've got the cover and pencils done by Greg Capullo and inks by Jonathan Glapian. As as much as I've been hyped with the casting, the two preludes to this, this was a kind of a slow, slow start. Same with the casting. The casting prelude titles, so you're you're building slow with them. And this continues it. It's it doesn't give away a lot, but it's You've, you've been teased with a lot of info in the two casting issues and you're teased with a lot of stuff in this. Uh, one of my favourite moments in it is when the Justice League are fighting on War World and Mongols got all these kind of robots fighting the Justice League and Batman says, just just let them devour you inside their mouths. There's a button hit it, kind of like a failsafe and it brings together a kind of like a Mega Transformer, Megazord Justice League style, and that that's that's like the first part. Like they've already taken out a major heavyweight uh, villain on the cosmic scale of Mongol. Who, if you're not familiar, he was a major part of the the. I'm trying to think of the titles. I, was it the Return? Or I think it was World Without and the Return of Superman, which followed on from the death of Superman. So in this you're you do get a lot of things happening. A mountain just appears out of nowhere in the middle of Gotham and it's displaced all the buildings and probably killed hundreds of people, thousands of people. Uh, you're introduced to a couple of characters, Nth Metal, you see Red Tornado there. There's there's a lot happening but there's also not a lot happening, which is kind of a little bit gutting. Uh, Batman is... He's backed into a corner here, so he is trying to stop whatever this is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting read. It's yeah, This is going to be a slow burner. There's six issues in the Dark Knight's Metal series, with the two casting making it eight. Yeah, th- I, I'm hoping that it's not a title where the majority of the stuff that happens is in tie-ins. It's it, it's a way just to 
get more money from you. But I've complete faith in Scott Snyder and his work that he's done previously on American Vampires and uh, New 52 Batman. So, with that being said, I will wrap up with my comic of the month. It wasn't a hard decision. This was Secret Empire issue 10. Now, if you're not familiar with the arc, then, you know, basically Steve Rogers has been had his history changed. He is now an agent of Hydra. And at this point, he is now the ruler of America. He's cut off all the uh, superheroes, uh, some in space, some in Manhattan with a dark force portal. And he's systematically trapping and killing and chasing other heroes. So, in this issue, Nick Spencer is your writer, art by Steve McNiven, and cover by Mark Brooks. Now, first page is Steve Rogers in an Iron Man suit, but it's an Iron Man style suit, but it's powered by the cosmic cube, so basically everyone's fucked. Like, everyone's fucked on such a grand scale that n- like, every hero that is left doesn't stand a chance, which is absolutely gotten. And one of my ultimate, ultimate favourite uh, moments in this issue, and in general, comes from the parallels of Sam Wilson, Captain America, going up against this cosmic powered, cosmic cube powered Captain America, Steve Rogers, and we get this side by side, almost like I, I've I've read the graphic countless times, and we get the Infinity War kind of dynamic of Sam Wilson's Captain America. Steve Rogers, Captain America's Thanos, and we get Bucky, who's Warlock, Ant-Man, who's Silver Surfer, and and we're presented with, okay, some major's going to happen here, because if you know what happened in Infinity Gauntlet, basically Thanos kills him, uh, kills Steve Rogers with one hit, but Silver Surfer misses grabbing the gauntlet off him by nanoseconds, so you know that the same mistake isn't going to be repeated this time around, you know, it's, it's the heroes are learning from their mistakes of past, which is absolutely beautiful, and obviously the tie-in to Infinity Gauntlet is something that I'm all about. Give me more Infinity Gauntlet stuff, but don't overuse it, you know. But, interesting twist, Sam Wilson bet- well, seemingly betrays everyone and gives Steve this last fragment of the Cosmic Cube to complete it, and he gives him a shield. But in doing so, we have, well, we've got the Winter Soldier, Bucky, and Scott Lang's Ant-Man going into the Cosmic Cube just at the right moment. And they, it's revealed that this was a plan all along. And it was a plan to bring Steve Rogers, America, Steve Rogers, Captain America out. And reset history. Steve's basically reset it already, but it's an absolute beauty of a throwdown between Captain America and Hydra Cap. And there's a this this comic is all about throwbacks. Like between the two fights, uh, the fight between the two Captain Americas, we're given a a, a panel which is re- reminiscent of. The Civil War one cover of Iron Man blasting his gauntlets against Steve Rogers, Captain America Shield, and it's a th- and a, it's an absolute thing of beauty. The art is phenomenal, and just at the right moment, you think it's an absolute thing of beauty that you have uh, Hydra Cap going to Thor's hammer. Basically, he's like, "Nah, I'm going to end this once and for all," and he's not worthy. He can't pick it up. And you see a tear just kind of build up. And he's like, like no. Like, you can see the the cogs working in his head going like, what? what's happened? What, why am I not worthy now? And Steve Rogers, or Captain America Steve Rogers, picks it up one-handed. He picks up Mjolnir and absolutely fucks it right off him. 
We obviously don't see where he got him. I'd say he got him right in the fucking face because fuck fascism. Yeah, I say that. Fuck fascism. And Captain America gives Thor her hammer back. Now, and then there's a vanishing point and it's it's a tie-ins to generations. Every character that uh, is vanished is the totally awesome Hulk, uh, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, Sam Wilson, Cap, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, Hawkeye, uh, Thor, and Wolverine, who is X-23. And it's it's a nice little, f- almost feel-good moment. You know, it's they're they're trying to capture that innocence but I feel my only uh, the only downside to this is that uh, there's certain characters that are still dead or still written off as dead and Las Vegas is still destroyed I'm I'm kind of annoyed by that that they never rewrote the history to exclude that and to fix it and to fix everything else, and have this as the new starting point for Marvel, I f- I feel they could have went that way. But also I understand that there's still going to be a lot of uh, resentment and anger towards Captain America. So, it like I said, I'm all about seeing the wheel being reinvented. These characters, I've hands down, I've probably read a fraction of their history. I've not ro- read everything on the characters, all the events, all the tie-ins, all the uh, spin-off titles. So what I have read, a lot is similar. Y- you know, I, it's it's hard to reinvent the wheel. But when it's done right like this, this, this is a moment in time that you need to just sit back and relax. There was a lot of hate on this title to start and the whole Captain America being an agent of Hydra but I feel this has paid off and I don't think the title was bent to the will of people being upset about it I feel this was the end game as it was meant to be so it's something it's it, it. I will say it right now it's a major risk that Marvel took turning one of their most beloved characters into one of their biggest villains and yeah, it, how long was it? Twenty one issues, you know. It's well from the Captain America, it was twenty one issues ish, or something. You know, it wasn't actually a lot, and it does it does add something. It it adds that kind of chip on his shoulder that he was used and abused against as well. Uh, you know, it's it's a dark, dark way to go, like DC done it a f- uh, many moons ago with Identity Crisis where they turned DC turned it on their head with Identity Crisis a few years ago with the revelation that Dr. Light a bit of a kind of B C list villain actually raped a wi- one of the wives of uh, a superhero and it's 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 a chance it's a dark chance that they take but it's it's something to try and draw interest and try and make current and bring in current political statements and things going on around the world that's that's what marvel was before with the x-men having the whole affirmative action that was that was the whole thing to start with the x men so having political agendas and relevance in comics isn't a new thing and it not being in the era of the x men was it as noted then as it as now no right now. X Men are all about doing this and that and having a new base over here and there's there's no substance to the stories. Yeah, they're they're doing things and characters are progressing, but there's no 
underlying issue to build characters on, to to build stories on. And I feel Secret Empire got a, a lot of unneeded stick for this. Fascism and the way of the world as it is right now, it needs to be discussed. The, the things need to be stamped out. And Marvel went out and stuck their necks out on this. And I feel it paid off. For the entire uh, Secret Empire arc and event, was it good? Mm, maybe. It, it, it rated higher uh, the first couple issues than it did in the middle. I felt, I, I felt it dropped a little in the middle. But with issue 10 and everything wrapping up, leading into Generations, which is Marvel coming out and saying... Uh, they're going back to their legacy, their original numbering on titles, and you will also have uh, no event for 18 months. I think it was around 18 months, which is much needed. There's so many events happening from one title to another that they're, oh, this big event, this big event, and too much is diluting and, oh, read up on this character and this arc you need to buy the tie-ins and it's 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 just milking money out of customers out of fans and really betraying their trust but the secret empire issue 10 i'm giving it a nine it's a well-deserved nine i don't think they could have pulled it off any better so that's my score and i'm happy with it and this is now leading into the graphic of the month of myself and young Matthew. And this brings us to our graphic of the month, which is actually graphic. As fuck. As fuck. It's for mature readers. So no Don't ways. read this on a train. Yeah, don't Just read a it word. on a train. Read it in... Well, then again, if you read it on your own, you could be deemed very creepy. Because you could be doing something. But definitely read it. Oh, but definitely read it because it is absolutely fucking amazing. Uh, we are talking about Sex Criminals of Volume 1, which uh, has the title One Weird Trick. And it was written by Matt Fraction and the art is by Chip Zdarsky. Yeah? Yep. That's how you pronounce that name. Oh, oh. <laughs> Do you actually know if it's pronounced that way? Yeah. Ah, fuck, we'll Google Translate it. Yeah. So, sex criminals, what can we say about it? It's fucking hilarious. It, <laughs> Literally. Like, we were talking about this before we were, were recording. I can't remember who it was that put me on to this. And they were saying, oh, you need to read sex criminals. It's amazing. It's hilarious. And I was like, really? Uh, okay. And I, and I was put off by the title, sex criminals, you know. It's not something that you'd go into a shop and buy and, you know, you'd get that weird look. But they don't mind about all the gay magazines or the Playboy that you pick up as well. It's because it's a comic, you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, apart from that. <laughs> so, sounds like you've got some personal experience with us, Mario. Yeah, Playboy. You know. But, uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, yes, Sex Criminals is for mature readers. It does what the title says. There's sex... And criminals. criminals, and they do sex while criminals. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Matt, you are fresh. I'm as vanilla as anything. Yes, you are fresh <laughs> to this title. How about you give us a little rundown? You that you've not experienced it. Right. I did think it was a bit weird what you suggested. Yeah. Over yeah, like since Matt, especially Matt, since you suggested fucking read shot. this. Read it, you little bitch. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You said it in a very dirty manner too. Yeah. No. <laughs> um. So like obviously. Me being the you know, most vanilla. Yes, cunt definitely. Here. I'm mainly an emulate with my superheroes and shit like this. So when you hand me a graphic that's titled Sex Criminals, I am a bit fucking freaked out. When I fe- initially sat down to read it, I was actually a bit surprised at first because straight off the bat, it was pretty fucking funny. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it was trying to be dark at the start, of it, oh. or not even dark, but like, you know, a wee bit mature yeah a um, hell of a lot mature but i like fl- whatever floats your boat um going through the whole sort of graphic i was kind of drawn in the most like not even by you know the dirty stuff 
mainly by the story for once, which is kind of weird. Um, but I say kind of weird for this sort <laughs> of, for this sort of material. Um, but yeah, it's a definitely a good read. Like, obviously, it's for mature readers, I'd say. But at the same time, like. I usually stick to the traditional sort of comic style stuff, and even I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good laugh, and I would probably recommend it if I wasn't, you know, frightened of all the weird looks I'd get for fucking recommending it. Um, like that—that's the thing with me. Like I've only ever been a kind of Marvel DC guy. Like I'll read some Dark Horse and Image stuff of sci-fi series that I like. Say, uh, your Dark Horse was Star Wars, Predators, Aliens, AVP, that kind of stuff. Terminator Hell was boy. Dynamite. Yeah. So, like, I've always been. I, I, here's the thing: I will always venture into a new comic series or something that is very popular. Apart from that kind of over popularized saga you know i've read the first volume it did nothing for me yeah but uh this i picked up a good while after it was recommended to me i saw it in sale on comicsology and i was like eh, I'll, I'll give this a bash no, I think pun, I'm, no pun intended i'm genuinely <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm pretty sure i was around about the same like the same time when it was recommended to you and i remember overhearing about it and i was like the fuck are they talking about know, like, sex criminals what sex what <laughs> fuck off <right? laughs> <laughs> no but seriously like when we were well when we kind of when we hung around with a uh, like group of mentalists yes um we this was suggested um not to me for some reason you know because I was just, like the fucking baby mascot of the fucking group at the time. You are still the baby mascot. I, I, I fucking obviously look at me. <laughs> but at the same time, I was kind of interested to try and find out what other guys were reading. <laughs> but you know, it's the same sort of thing. Like when you overhear something weird like this, like do you really want to dive into that sort of shit? Um, but I'm kind of glad that I have now. Um, and I'm probably going to pick up volume two and oh, whatever yeah. more of it are, you know? Like um, the, the general story is that uh, the characters are, they have special powers, and they get these, it, it's, they, sexy powers, they, they freeze time, by doing it, by coming, yeah. yes, you heard that right, when they orgasm, they freeze time, you know, what, what's, what? space magic, yes, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, what's it, uh, jazz world, they go into no, it's come world. Come, come world, yes, uh, come world. Which I like is how just quick I was now. I know <laughs> you're like, I know what it is. I've been there. <laughs> Got the t-shirt. Uh, yeah, this could really work as a TV mm. show. Ah, it really could. Like a kind of mature style game. Of After the watershed, audience, obviously. Like, uh, it's got your sex. It's got your dark humor and stuff. It's it's absolutely fucking hilarious. Like so. They're trying to uh, raise, well, I wouldn't say raise money, gather money to protect a library that's been shut down because of the bank, which uh, Susie is working at the library. Yes, is and the, b- the bank is looking Hold to... Hold on, what's the male character's name? Uh, John. John, right. Okay. And John actually works at the bank, which... <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same bank what her dad used to work yeah. in as well, isn't it? Um, and uh, John does some weird things when he goes to the toilet. Like, oh, fuck yeah. when, when, <laughs> when sensor come comes uh, enters come world, he likes to uh, defecate in his boss's plant. I don't know if we're selling this good enough here. You know, like, uh, like I don't this, know how else to advertise it. But you know, like, like if you've got dark, if you like dark humor with a bit of tongue in cheek, you know, maturity, it's fucking brilliant. Like. So, long story short, they want they get together. They f- discover that each each other can go into this magic trick, magic world, which is basically time frozen still when they orgasm, and they come to this plot of oh, when we come, we're oh, we're gonna do this and whatever, and they they do different things, and then they decide oh, we can keep the library open by stealing money from this bank because they're a bunch of shits. No, essentially. And then they do start off slow, small, yeah. don't they? Like yeah, they, they it's, practice. It's, it's like quite a slow uh, build. They go. They go, I remember that like, they go through. They go to like other smaller banks first to try and see how long, it, so they can get a, a reasonable fucking plan. As you would if you were planning oh, to yeah. rob a bank. Not that I'm planning to rob a bank, but you know, 
Um, so like they're obviously slowly progressing, um, and getting I'd say better getting jiggy. at it. Getting jiggy. Aye. Um, which is, which could be uh, really funny if you remember. Uh, oh, what's the movie with? Uh, I don't know. I don't watch dirty movies. No, what's the movie? <laughs> uh, the skinhead guy, and he's got to keep himself with adrenaline. Like he's got to keep on getting adrenaline. Oh fuck, what is it? Uh, he's in fucking Expendables as well. Is it Jason Stratham? Jason Stratham. Uh, tran- is that, is that one it's not Transporter. It's, it's one of, is that a, he's a mechanic or some shit and he jumps lots his heart with a car battery or aye. some shit? Like that's the second one. The aye. first one, he's been poisoned so he's got to like keep adrenaline in his system. <laughs> yeah, that movie. It, imagine like there's mechanic? some sex scenes in that where he's like pumping his bird in public and he's not doing it to be like, cr- like fucking obscene or anything. He's doing it to actually stay alive. Stop. So... Like, this could work as a TV show because it would have that dark, funny, tongue-in-cheek kind of sex scenes where it's not, like, super erotic and whatever. Uh, it's just very comedy-centric. Just, aye. Uh, it's definitely one for the CW. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, CW, pick this up. But uh, to counter them, Matt, there are some sex police. Which, at first, I thought looked like the way they're drawn... Or the main lassie? Yeah, Kegel Face. Kegel Face, aye. <laughs> Which uh, is a perfect fucking ex- uh, name because I of don't her know. expression. It's the way she's coloured. Like, at first, I thought she was alien because she kind of reminded me of Star Wars. <laughs> what do you call her? Starfire? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, so, because she's green eyes and she's like one of them fucking soccer mum tan that yeah. she's got going on and red hair. And I'm like, and wearing white, like all white shiny aye. costumes. It's just uh, fucked up. Um, aye, so, like, the sex police are the ones that can also do the same sort of magic yeah. trick that the old fuckers can do. <laughs> Ma- I like how you call it magic trick. I want Penn and Teller <laughs> to show me this, right? <laughs> Make yourself come in five seconds free-handed. <laughs> I want to see that. I want to see this on Full Us. Like. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but uh, aye, so there's, I'm a, it's an organisation pretty much yeah. set up by the same sort of people that have this sort of power. Um, they're not actual cops, but... One of them is a yeah. actual cop. The other ones are mainly other sort of weirdos. Weirdos, I. One <laughs> of them, I think one of them's a bus driver, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, they are basically out to make sure nobody's abusing this sort of power. The yeah, way which is understandable, th- you know. They're basically out to make sure nobody's abusing the power the way these two cunts are basically abusing this power. Um, so all the build up to it, to the actual heist. It's pretty fucking funny. Oh, aye. Watching it, and it's not just it's not just watch, watch, watching it. It's the background stuff as well. Like when they first find out that each of them can go into come world. I like how the boys are the ones that call it the come world, but uh, she calls it the quiet. Like okay. that's that's <laughs> not that's not very imaginative. Wait, right? Shut up. No, he done it as a boy, so he's just went, "Oh, come world." I can't believe you can't come world. Oh, shut up. <laughs> right, but, <laughs> um. Where was he? Uh, the organisation and build up to the robbing aye, of the bank. Aye. There's a scene where they're in playing pool as well. Do you remember us, but yeah. And like the whole scene is basically set around like them two. They're this is their initially starting off with their relationship sort of thing, and she starts bursting out with Queen's uh, fat bottom girls. Yeah. But this, but it's the speech bubbles are covered up by like sticky notes sort of things yeah and it's like oh we couldn't really afford the, <laughs> afford the legal license for fat bottom girls and then and it keeps going the whole way through the yeah. song by the looks of it and it looks for the pictures look fucking amazing because also she's getting right in it she's got the freddie mercury jacket on and everyone um and like by the end of it like it's still going on all the wee sort of sticky notes are going on and it's just it's going right off topic it's got nothing to do with fucking fat bottom girls by the end of it um, that, yeah. that's the thing that's good like in like you would maybe find in a they'd maybe do like a wee editorial note in an issue and stuff but that kind of like breaking the fourth wall kind of thing giving the reader like an inside bit of knowledge I'm sure there's a, uh, a wrap up uh, of a previous like argument or something that the two characters have and it's just like yeah this is basically what's happened like we could go on for like this entire page about this, but we're just going to talk a load of rubbish, Aye. and it's just that kind of humour, fourth wall breaking, which is just it would it would go so well on In a TV, TV show. show. Like, I, like the first time I read it's this, I was going, 
why hasn't this been made? This would be incredible. Like, okay, like, obviously, like, your nudity would be called into question. Aye. But I could see Zoe Deschanel uh, that's what I as thought. a character, Susie. Obviously, she looks the double of her. That's, that's instantly who I thought was he, even with the, all the, like, the hot, hot Susie's way of talking in it. Yeah. That and is, and that's whose voice I read it in. Route. Oh, that's whose voice I read it in, especially when she's talking about the butt stuff. But like yeah, that yeah. bit's just that's I'll, I'll just get it in her voice. Who, like, who could you see uh, John uh, John being played as? By, I'm not really sure. Like, I'm, I'm trying to think of someone who's a wee bit geeky, but at the same time, like you know, not. <laughs> I would maybe say because his size, he's obviously not. He's I, a, I, would, I would imagine him to be taller than a lot taller than Susie, but Charlie Day. Possibly. Aye. Like, he's very comedy centric and, you know, he's funny and horrible bosses and uh, always sunny. Like, so I could see those two, and it would, that's the thing. Nudity, would they do that? Maybe not, but you don't need to have it implied. Like, maybe have that as when the fourth wall's been broke and stuff. Aye. But we're diverging again. Yes. Uh, yeah, so throughout this book, you, you start off with the bank heist. And it's just constant flashbacks previously that's led them to this uh, sexual encounter. Sexual encounter. So it's it is a nice slow build, building the the relationship up and introducing all these new characters and stuff. Well, these weird abilities and things. And it's very. That's the thing. Like, if when I was told about this book, I was just like, I don't think that's for me. Like, I was the same. I but I thought once I, was... I read it, I was just like, how are more people not turned on to this? Ah, two uh, puns already. I'm the king of puns. Fuck's sake. I know. James <laughs> James had to put up with me for so long. And he, he had to go to Birmingham oh. just to get away from my puns. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least all I need to do is take a train and go up a big hill. Uh, <laughs> a, a big hill is an understatement. It's a fucking mountain. Way going. <laughs> but yeah... Uh, I I love this. There's it, a lot of stuff in it, like most people, not me, you know, because I'm 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 a wee angel. But ah, like most people, course. like the stuff like uh, John finding porn in the woods. That's his first experience <laughs> of porn and shit. Like that's that's an unknown thing nowadays. Because like most people get their shit digitally. Like who the fuck finds porn in the woods nowadays? Somebody. Like, I think, I think I was like part of the last generation of that shit. Like you used you to find porn it. in the woods. I, I made a mind I die. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, artwork, like we've spoke about the writing, the writing is based. I would say it's they're not even writing a comic; that they're they are writing Aye. a TV show. Aye, this. it's basically watching like what would you call it the sort of episodic. Ah, uh, aye. What episodic, you said? Uh, story. Aye, like when they're in plan doing the TV show, you could pretty much just rip that straight out, and that's you got the foundations yeah. there. It is. F- is that, uh, it looks pretty good as well. Yeah, the, the artwork <laughs> is very... In places, it looks fantastic. Yeah. In places, it looks a wee bit minimalist, but at the same time, it still feels current. Like It feels like it's the same sort of pattern it's following. It's yeah. not like someone else's artwork, somewhere else and whatnot. It is the constant the whole way through. Yeah, When uh, also when they're in the quiet, you get these kind of glowing streams across... To to obviously tell the difference between real world and uh, this frozen time zone. The be- the best way of describing it is sort of like the lightning and flash. Yes. Like, so when when the flash is running and it's all in slow mo and stuff, like that is the basically the or even slow mo and red. That's it's essentially like that with like sort of lens flares and shit like that. Yeah. Um. But those are the like, two best examples we can try without you know going out and actually buying it. Go on, do it. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to go out and buy like it. You know, you can buy it over the internet. Yeah, <laughs> like, hide, hide your shame. You know, that's what I've done. <laughs> uh, one of the funniest things that actually happens is the bus driver, uh, Dick Dildo Slapping John, <laughs> which I bet was an absolute treat to draw. I, I did not see it coming. And it was because I was watching. Hey, oh, hold ah. on, I just stole uh, 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 fun. Because I was reading it on Comixology, where you've got like the wee sort of following the panel sort of yeah. setting on it, and then this one big panel, because I was watching it landscape, and then this big panel of the guy, a wee bald guy with a beard smacking John upside the face with a dildo, and it knocks, 
He's got already he knocks got his glasses off. Knocks his, his face. Not just that, he knocks his glasses off, and then after that, John says, "If you d- if you do that, if you hit me again, I'm going to break your jaw." And the wee guy shits himself nearly after he's licked the dildo. I know the blood of the dildo, which is just like who <laughs> <laughs> Mario can't even. In what world <laughs> did they come up with that? Like this is my kind of humor. Like dark, silly humor is just fucking brilliant. Like. The artwork is absolutely phenomenal. Like it is a kind of realistic style artwork. You know, it's not too overly comic. Like say something like a Scotty Young comic, which is beautiful, but it's a different flavor. You know, it's like ice cream. You no, you like a ton of different flavors. You know. But so you have, best, but you have best your one. one. Yeah. You always have your one. Yeah. But uh, chocolate chip, yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, the artwork is absolutely amazing, and I, c- I can't fault this graphic, to be honest. Uh, like I said, the rest of the series does take on the, this humour of fourth wall breaking and very tongue-in-cheek. Uh, later, current issues have introduced other characters, not to be a spoiler, that also go into the quiet, which have weirder abilities, which are kind of close, uh, awkwardly. Oh, I'll sh- See, I'll I've not read this far, and I'm kind of interested though, oh, but at oh, the same if time, you're interested you're like in after reading this, you will but be But it's the fact that you said weirder, and I'm like, okay, I know there okay. is stuff you can build on on okay, this. Okay, like, if you think having a wank and then being in a frozen time zone is weird, wait until you read the rest of the issues, because it is fucked up <laughs> like matt fraction and chip must have had a field day going okay this is very like weird what's the weirdest thing that we can do and they've done it i don't know how they've done it but they've fucking done it drugs possibly you know whatever they've got please pass them over to yeah. glaswegian geeks you know whatever they're on dm us we'll give you our address and we will happily accept whatever you are smoking we'll also give you 10 percent off it Ripped yes I, yes glaswegian geeks as well yes you know rep to and glaswegian geeks just use that code but following on yes yes so yes yes uh what 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 would you rate it uh, I'd probably rate it at least an, an eight, maybe even a nine. Is that good? Because as I said, like I'm like not willing usually to be that sort of person that buys this <laughs> sort of shit. Exactly. Um, and some some like sometimes it is kind of scary. Um, but this was one of the fucking best recommendations I think I've had in a good long while. I'm not going to give it a ten purely because obviously you said it improves on. Oh, so it, improve is. Under underselling it, right? So, well, obviously, it's obviously must improve at some point. I like, well, must get better. Oh, so nice. obviously, I wouldn't give it full marks straight away if it's if it gets better. Um, artwork's amazing. The whole sort of story is it's interesting. It's, it's some it's interesting. That's, a, it's that's a, the thing. Like you, you take a look at the landscape of comics. You've got horror stuff like Friday Thirteen, Evil Dead, uh, Hellraiser, Aliens, Predator. You've got superhero stuff, Marvel, DC. Uh, you've got Valin and uh, 2018 and stuff. Like, there's like I said, it's like going into an ice cream store and you see all these different flavors. Like, some might not be for you. Like, I didn't think this would be for me. Aye. But after reading it, I have. Uh, it's one of the few titles I've actually subscribed to on Comicsology. So as soon as it's out, it's in my. I've I've already basically paid for it. I can download it at any moment. Uh, on release because it is that good and it is improved with each issue. There, there was a little uh, down spell where it wasn't out for maybe like three or four months, and then the next issue was three or four months, so they had to do like a recap page, obviously because there was such a long time. But it didn't really stop it. It didn't stop the momentum behind it. It's actually built very well from uh, the end of volume one. Uh, so by saying that, I'm giving it a ten. It was an actual surprise hit. I didn't think I would like it, and I fucking loved it. Like any time I read it, or any other issue after, I'm just like, like out of all the TV properties that 
we are used to seeing like things that are overkill killing the TV like your uh, reality shows and stuff. I'm not even going to mention half the shit. And then there's like other rubbish as well. And you're going, why hasn't this been picked up? Yeah, like this, like there's enough issues where they could take it season by season, like right. have volume one, season one. You know, we're not even expecting like you know Game of Thrones style. Like oh, I could no. say here, man, like because like I, I would actually say this would suit the style of kind of like New Girl, like yes. maybe twenty five minute that's episode aye. style, like short and fast. Aye, not like me. That's the opposite <laughs> of me. I'm full of puns today. Oh, full of something. It's one. It's yeah. one of those ones. Like, I love it, but at the same time, I kind of, I definitely would get judged for recommending it. Yeah, that that's the thing. Because like, even even after you've read it, you're kind of like, I feel dirty. I can't believe I've like, how the fuck did I get to this sort of? I know. Uh, because it's like it's not even like something you can actually compare it to because it's so original sort of thing. Yeah. And it's something like we kind of need, like, because everything's just a copy of everything nowadays. Like, this is like one of the most original things I've read in a good long while, and it, I'm so happy I did, because it was it's fucking hilarious. Well, <laughs> like I said, it was uh, my graphic of the month was going to be uh, it was an image title. Aye, uh, image is possibly one of the best uh, comic publishers right now, and it's down to their originality. Like mm. Alex and Ada, uh, Alex plus Ada is the 21st century sci-fi romance novel that you have been waiting for. It's a more serious version of this without the, like the magic powers and stuff. Uh, and I could see Alex and Ada picked up for a, mo- a movie or a series. It's, a, I think, a 15-issue run, and it was beautiful from start to finish. How old is it? Uh, it's, it seen? only finished last year. Huh? Uh, no, it finished in two, I think two thousand fifteen. What year are you living in, man? I know, like it, it was only out fifteen issues, so it, it was a small run, and that's probably why most people haven't heard of it, though. Like, yeah, cause that's what happens. Like the original stuff just kind of fades away. Yeah, like I, I will defend Image until the end of time because of these titles. Uh, also, James had uh, put me on to Scott Young's uh, Fairyland. I hate Fairyland. I have heard of this. I have yeah, not. It endeavoured, is but fucking insane. Like Scotty Young writes and uh, draws, draws, and it's beautiful. Like it's violently beautiful, but it is done. You know Scotty Young's artwork. Imagine like a gory Scotty Young book. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. I'm gonna need to find this now. That, that's the thing. Image are knocking out the park right now, which. I love because it gives me something else to read. Like, when I started reading comics, I just went for what I knew. Marvel, Spider-Man, Batman, DC, and I branched out from there, reading event comics and then going from different characters from those events. And to be honest, maybe four or five years ago, I was very bored and frustrated with comics going round the same cycle, like DC rebooting their universe after I bought an absolute fuck Shit ton of stuff. Up. And they're like, oh, that doesn't exist anymore. And it's like, well, fuck you too. And Image have got these original intellectual properties that are just waiting. Like, they're waiting for the masses right now. Like, yeah. I, I don't know why any, like, t- TV company hasn't picked this up. I don't know why. It's it's funny. It's sexy. It's it's intriguing, you know? Like, even the sticky notes, like, they could have that over... they done it, like, uh, when I first read it, that whole sticky note scene kind of reminded me of Tim Minchin. Have you ever seen? Yeah, yeah. The one where he's doing like, a Celine Dion song, but it kinda yes. and he says, oh, I can't get the rights to it and all that, so he just starts talking over yeah, it. They could that do is that. exactly how it is. They That's how I read it. Like, that. So, like, it is do- definitely doable. Okay, okay. Um, but, like, I s- like, I don't, honestly, I'm the same. I don't know why it's not been picked up. I think it's purely because it's probably a wee bit risky and people don't want to take that risk. Yeah. Oh, come it's on. The same come on, Game of Thrones. Have, no, I'm like, not within saying... the first, like, two, three episodes, Aye. you've got a brother and sister shagging. Giggity. It's in the first episode, too. First episode. Very yeah, first I've, episode. I've, I've, I couldn't Spoilers. remember. Spoilers. But, 
Aye. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> Seven year old. Still. <laughs> people out there are still haven't watched it. I Can know. You believe it? Shocking. I know. Fucking hang yourselves. Wow, that's harsh. <laughs> For the cock. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I like I can s- I kind of see why some people haven't picked it up, but at the same time, I d- it's the same sort of reason I hadn't picked it up, and now that I have picked it up, I want to pick up more of it. Yeah. So like, like hands down, you will be hooked. Like one me. one TV thing like station needs to pick this up, and then as soon as they've got it, like it's going to take off. Like this is the thing, Netflix could pick up. Netflix, Netflix like, would be a brilliant idea. Like look look at Glow for instance. Aye. Have you watched it? I haven't watched it, but I have heard lots okay, of good things. Okay, watch it. It's, I think, maybe 8 to 10 episodes, 20-ish minutes long. Aye. Like, Easy. That would be perfect Aye. to suit that style. Like, you don't need a 45-minute hour-long like, episode. Netflix is the place to go for TV shows yeah, nowadays. It, it like caters for all flavours and, and tastes, you know? It's got, what else has it got? Orange is New Black, Stranger yeah. Things. Like, it's doing really well, so, like, they're definitely one of the ones to actually... Either look at it, either that or at a push. Am- Amazon, Amazon. I was going like to say. Uh, Man in the High Castle. Like Aye. what's the other one? Ash vs Evil Dead. Is that Amazon? Oh yes. So like that. That's that's, and that's like twenty five pre- minute episode. That's, that's doing pretty well, isn't it? Like oh, everybody I, I at first was it. everybody at first was kind of like, oh, it's on Amazon. Nobody's going to watch it. I've, I've loads bought of both seasons on Amazon Prime because it is amazing. Once they're both out in DVD, damn right, I'm going to be fucking buying them because yeah. I love Ash vs Evil Dead and. There's not enough uh, new properties getting brought to TV. Like, you see the fucking rehash of, oh, keeping up with the blanks, uh, Celebrity br- Big Brother and Big Brother, like, every fucking year. Like, seriously? Like, this... I've here, Here's, this some, is, here's this something for you. I've not actually watched television in a good long while. I will stream stuff from Netflix or Amazon or watch box sets on DVD because of TV. The stuff TV, TV is shit. Is shit. Only thing that I would w- actually sit down and watch TV because it, it would take a while to come out is either Sherlock or fucking Robot Wars. Yes. Generally, only two things I'd watch on telly right now, and I don't even watch. I haven't watched. I generally haven't watched live telly in about three years. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I've Netflix now, TV and thingy, Amazon Prime, and I'm fucking sorted. Yes, so, exactly. Like, I don't see why. I know. Why we need all these, this amount of shit, like Celebrity Big Brother and fucking... I know, like, oh... I'm a celebrity. I, uh, I'm off. a celebrity. Uh, I'm a celebrity is basically like living in Gurok sometimes, like... <laughs> we did that on our fucking lunch show. <laughs> Alright, well, I th- did I actually rate it? I think I did. You gave it a 10. A 10, okay, I cool. A I gave it a Alright, okay. Because I, I was actually... I got on a divergent point and I was like, hold on, did I actually say that? But yes, I give this a 10. Uh, and I would, I would be very shocked if it's not picked up on whatever TV station. Like, Chew was uh, supposed to be getting picked up uh, for an animation with Felicia Day and the guy that plays Glenn in The Walking Dead. Oh, Stephen Young. Young. Yeah. Yon. I can't remember. His yeah. Son. Uh, his son like they two were supposed to be the male and female lead. And I've not heard anything from that in a good, good long time. And that that's a brilliant series as well. That's another image title. And stuff like this. Okay, people might be like, oh, it's another comic book sh- show. Yeah, but would you, what would you rather watch this or fucking Love Island? You know, like s- something that's fucking not even reality. Or, oh, the only way is Essex. Go and fuck yourself. <laughs> Give me s- go and... Give me something to make me watch TV again. Image, I've got a fountain, an absolute fucking fountain of intellectual properties that they could fucking take at any moment and turn into a TV show that would get them fucking ratings, that would get them in advertisers, that would bring a fresh new audience to their screens. I've just had a bit of a brainwave. Yes. Garfunkel and Oates could do the fucking soundtrack to it. Nice, because it is that sort of theme, sort of thing. It's a uh, because uh, they done a they, they done a Netflix series, I'm pretty sure, as um, well. I'm not very sure on it's that. It's definitely on Netflix, but yeah. I don't know if it's Netflix that done it. But like that sort of show kind of reminds me a wee bit of this now. Come to think of it, it's not as obviously like sexual or anything, yeah. like that, but it's the, the the sort of humor is in there. Um, because obviously, they girls are kind of dirty as well. Yeah. <laughs> So, 
that's been our graphic. And sorry for the little bit of TV rant there. We're I'm not actually not going to edit that we out get because po- that is actually yeah. relevant. We like getting political on this show yeah. now, especially don't, when don't I'm Don't get on started it. about Trump, okay? Fuck that'll go f- Here all night. F- <laughs> yes, the, the five-hour podcast has begun, people. But if you like our stuff, you can find us over at Facebook and Twitter with at Glaswegian Geeks. Have a wee search for us. You can find our audio stuff on SoundCloud, SoundCloud um. and iTunes. And with we're also on the YouTube's. Yes, we're on the YouTube's with some video content and all of our podcasts. We'll be having a lot more video content uploaded, yes. hopefully soon. Yes, hopefully then. soon. Matt will actually get, get his some arse videos. And <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say pull the finger mm. out, but you know, I, I don't want to be that crass. You know. Know, we've had enough fucking innuendos now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it's sex criminals. It's pulled the dirt uh, out on us. Yeah, but we're definitely, well, hopefully, going to have a, a video up soon because. September's coming around, end of yes. September. What's that, Matt? That's coming good for Yay! me. Yay! So hopefully have a video up or run about the end of September because I know well that's run about the time it is. It's around the 23rd, 24th. Yeah. Um, so I hope to see some of you there, maybe, maybe, yes. hopefully. Uh, Matt will be repping the wee geeks. Aye. Wee class, wee I will be, I will be in cosplay. So the little, the you know, train that could. Giggity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will be in cosplay on both days. I will be Rick from Rick and Morty on Sunday. And Wubble on dub dub. Wubble dub dub. And so Saturday, I believe I'm going as Fry from Futurama because something happened to my Arsenal costume that I can't oh say. Oh no, what happened? My jacket burst. Oh. The zip was fucked on it. Oh, but no. I but overused no, that well, fucking jacket though. No, let's be honest, mate. It was your ripped arms that burst it, didn't it? It's got to be. You flexed too much and you ripped it. Ba bam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for listening to our little rant of our comic of the month and our graphic of the month and also you can have a little look on ripped apparel for all your geek stuff you know uh, t-shirts hoodies t-shirts, hoodies mouse mats mouse mats posters coasters the whole shebang like i think they even do baby stuff don't they they've started doing, ba- they've started doing kids stuff at yeah least anyway, they've started so doing kids tees as well so if you've got a kid buy your kid a tee you get, tight fisted cunt. getting some original artwork on that tee get yeah. it get, get advertising it. i know uh, just go add whatever you want to your car and add in the code Glaswegian Geeks. No all spaces. One word. No spaces. No spaces. We've got no space for cunts. All right. <laughs> so there's no space in our word. <laughs> uh, so hope you've enjoyed the show and please geek out.